Yeah, the last two, two or three, let me see, two or three videos that I did, I put the titles down that I, I would like to be up there. Uh, and I wrote them down and I gave them to Beth on a small piece of card. Unfortunately, I placed it on the table with all of the receipts that Beth is doing for the end of the month. And, uh, no surprise, it got, uh, it got lost. And so, because she was uploading the videos at the end of the night, it turned out that um, all the wrong titles, they were right for her, but but not quite what I intended. So I said that I would start putting the title at the beginning of the video. So let me see, what can I, what can I say the title of this is? I was just thinking about how everybody fits in together like a jigsaw puzzle. And um, I come from a generation of jigsaw puzzlers, so, that's what I would uh, talk about on this, is um, the jigsaw puzzle and how we all fit in. The jigsaw puzzle and how we all fit in. Do I know how we all fit in? No, of course I don't. Anybody that's on, uh, anybody, no matter who they are, who are on YouTube now and they are telling their secrets to life, the secrets are for them personally. And sometimes they work for you and me and sometimes they don't so we take what we can use and use it and the rest we leave to somebody else to use and somebody else will always find a use for it so the jigsaw puzzle why why would I say that it's a good metaphor for how we put our lives together uh, which of course is my opinion but when me and my brother, my sister, used to get a good jigsaw puzzle. The first thing that we would do is find the corners. So the corners have to go in and then you find all the straight edges and you find out how they join up to the corners. And then the rest, of course, is life. So once you've made up your mind where the corners are, then you've got to actually sort the rest out and one of the things that's where we leave the metaphor of the jigsaw puzzle behind because every piece in our lives it has a place every person in our lives have a place now that we have people who love us and people who hate us so whenever we share our dreams we have even the people who love us will have their own comfort zone. And here's one of the funny things that I found. I always listen to people talking about, oh, you've got to get out of your comfort zone. A big part of getting out of your comfort zone is getting out of other people's comfort zone. Now, remember, I remember I was working as a contractor in, in the UK and by luck I had found, and hard work I think, I'd found uh, a man who had made a great deal of money by, let me see, what was his, uh, he, he ran a company that gave advice on stocks and shares and I built a recording studio for them in, in their offices and I became quite friendly with the man who ran it. He was a good guy, showed me, showed me how to do quite a few things in business, how to run a bar, a bar chart uh, showing my income, my incoming and outgoing, uh, where the petty cash was and why this would be important to know was if you were going sorry I'm trying to get onto the road safely if you were going to the bank manager and you were going to ask him for an overdraft an overdraft facility you would need to know what it would be that would appeal to him to grant that uh, overdraft facility so he showed me 
how to do a bar chart for for the work that I was doing and why I would need X amount of money as my overdraft to work with. Now this was very interesting for me and it, it actually was very useful. I went to the bank and using what he had taught me I was able to get a, a £20,000 overdraft. So where does Comfort Zone come into this conversation? The point that I was getting to was that every time that I interacted with this man, I was in my was in my jeans and a t-shirt. And I realized later this was his this was his comfort zone for me. That's where I that I was the jigsaw puzzle. I was the part in his jigsaw puzzle that fitted when I wore jeans and a t-shirt. Then one day he actually called me in to his office and needed to see me and I was on my way to uh, a meeting with someone who was going to be quite important to me and I was dressed in a suit and tie and, uh, and a top coat. <laughs> and when he saw me, he he literally was shocked because I looked like all of the guys in his office and like him. I was dressed like a, an office worker. I was dressed like somebody who was giving advice to other people on stocks and shares. I wasn't, but that's how I looked. And it shook him in his comfort zone. I was out of his comfort zone for me. So when we start to put our own lives together, we enter into other people's comfort zones. And we need to negotiate that situation because a lot of the time as we move up and we gain and we, uh, we gain our, I don't know, status or stature, and we start to improve ourselves, then things are going to change. And jeans and t-shirt may not be good enough anymore because the new people that you're meeting who will accept you on your own evaluation, they won't expect to see you in what you were wearing in the past. So you're now moving into a different area and and you must you must be appropriate to that area. Watching out. I'm on the main road now so I've got to pay attention. So I realized afterwards that was what happened. I put it together afterwards that wow he wasn't ready to see me like this and it kind of uh, unsettled him. So, as more and more work came in, I started to be in my different comfort zone and he had to adjust. So, we're moving through these situations in, in all our lives and we all we all have haters. Once, when we were under uh, extreme attack from all of the people that were trying to pull us down, and there were a lot. I remember, I remember going uh, onto the media, and I found two other people who were under attack, who were being called a lot of things who were being defamed, who were being slandered, who were being criticised, mostly by people who were anonymous and couldn't be held accountable. And I remember saying to Beth, what we're going through now, we are sharing that with two other people. But these are the two other people, you would not expect them at that time to be being chased and attacked uh, with, with dogs barking at their heels and trying to bring them down. 
those two people back in that time were President Trump and President Duterte. So if the president of a company, if the president of a company can be attacked, if the president of a country can be attacked, then we're all fair game. We're all going to have our attackers. We're all going to be disturbing someone's comfort zone. They're not ready for us to do that. When we first came to Bahal, we it's funny that we've been criticized for having nothing when we came to Bahal. <laughs> and this is true. When we came, we pretty well spent up, and all that we had was my pensions, which are actually very small. But we were able to live on those, and then finally, finally, we bought a motorcycle. And that disturbed some people's comfort zones, and they started to predict that the motorcycle would be wrecked in no time. And eventually, we donated that to the church. We gave it to Beth's brother-in-law who is the pastor of the church that we were going to. And so when we did that, we moved up and we bought the little red. And then, so that gave people a little nudge as well. And then we moved up into the big blue. And then we started to do a lot of stuff. Uh, and no matter what you do, you're going to disturb people. So the last thing on earth that you must care about in your own mind is whether you're disturbing anyone. I listened to a very funny Indian uh, guru, wise man, seer, and, um, and he actually was very funny, made me laugh. Someone asked the question, what should I do when someone is unforgivable? He said, don't forgive them. Don't forgive them, punish them. Of course, he wasn't talking about that, really. He was saying that if you don't get forgive people, if you don't learn to get along with them, then all that you're doing is you're giving space in your head to a tenant that you don't even like. And he's staying there for free. Well, actually, he's not staying there for free. You're paying to have him there. So, I think as time goes by and we get older, which you may have noticed I am getting older, um, we realize that what we think other people are saying is not even true. A lot of the time when we are wondering and worrying about what other people think, they're not thinking about us. Actually, they don't give us much of a thought. I'll close with the great cartoon that I saw uh, by Gary Larson. And the picture, the picture within which this little cartoon uh, was created was split in half. In the top half was the lady uh, lying in bed thinking. Underneath was a young man lying in bed thinking and he was his his thoughts were uh, should I should I call her no I can't call her well should I maybe maybe she doesn't like me no, maybe, no I think that maybe she does no should I call her no I, I, I yes I will but no I won't and in the top the woman was lying in bed saying I think I like vanilla. Sometimes we're not even we're not even a player in whatever images are going through the person who we are putting so much attention on. The best thing to do is just to get on with it. So I'm nearly there.